All right. Welcome everyone. Uh, it's 10 a.m. Let's give it a couple more minutes uh, for more folks to join. All right. Um, I think we can get started. Uh, let's. let's uh, we have a packed agenda, so let's get started with uh, intros, like brief intros. And if you've been around, you can just say uh, you're a regular. <laughs> but if you have anything in mind, you know, just feel free to bring it up. So myself, I'm Ricardo Aravina. I'm a co-chair for Tag Runtime and also a lead for this working group. And excited to see a lot of agenda items. Uh, so let's go ahead with uh, Xiao. Xiao Zhang. Hello. Hello. My name is Xiao Zhang uh, from the Dark Cloud. Uh, hello. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, Huamin. Uh, hi, Huamin Chen. Regular from Red Hat. I'm a tech lead at the, the working group. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Aikawa. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Andrew. I'm just here to learn more about how to run like HPC workloads for AI on Kubernetes. Great. Welcome. Uh, Peter Pan. Hi, guys. My first time to join this meeting. Glad to see you in person. Yeah, great to see you. Thanks. Mario? Mario Fallon? Uh, hi, uh, Mario from Kubematic. I am not yet a regular, but not my first meeting. Awesome. Good to see you. Uh, Adele? Yeah, hey, everyone. I probably can call myself a regular, um, and I, um, I look forward to working with you all. Awesome. Uh, Ron, Ron, Ronald Perry. Yep. <laughs> You're a regular. Everyone, <laughs> yep. Yep. Regular. I also have a, I'm sitting in a chair, but I'm not a chair. Um, <laughs> yeah. Looking forward, same as Adele said, working with everyone and, uh, good to see you, Peter. The legend is here. The legend of the landscape. That's right. Uh, Ni Pendra. Uh, you pender up? Okay, so maybe we lost them. Let's go with uh, Victor. Yeah, sorry, I'm here. I don't shout. Okay, this is me, Pender. I'm running from Bangalore, India. I'm just uh, trying last couple of sessions and exploring cloud native and AI. Awesome, welcome. Uh, Dean Wampler. <clears throat> Thanks for joining. Yeah, my off mute. Uh, yes. Hi, hi, I'm Dean Wampler. I guess I don't have my video on. Anyway. I am uh, from IBM Research. Uh, Wa Wen invited me to come today and, and talk to you all about the AI Alliance, which I'm a representative to. Great. Glad to see you here. Uh, let's go with some of the folks um, on the Zoom. Uh, we've got Kathy, Kazi Zhang. Oh, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, let me talk. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kathy Zhang. Um, so I'm the um, technical oversight committee of CNCF. Um, while working in this uh, working group, I'm also um one of the leads for this working group. Awesome. Welcome, uh, BJ. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh. 
I work in um, Azure Kubernetes um, service, AKS serviceability in Microsoft. And uh, though, though this is my personal thing, I'm sort of uh, new here, uh, first couple of meetings, learning from the regulars. Awesome, welcome. Cheng Wang. Oh yes, hello everyone. This is Chen Wang. I'm a research scientist from IBM Research, and uh, I've been uh, working on a lot of things of projects before, uh, including Kubernetes, uh, scheduler, auto scheduler, and also Kepler. And recently, I'm uh, working um, on um, large language model inference system on Kubernetes. So, um, glad to meet everyone here. Yep, welcome. Uh, Bo, Bowen from IBM. Oh, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Bowen. I'm from IBM Research. Uh, I've been working on some AI applications uh, using large language model for digital health application. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Um, uh, hi, uh, I'm Hao. Um, I'm from JP Morgan Chase um, Unity team. I'm yeah, really happy to connect with you guys. And thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining. And Andre, last but not least, I think. Yeah, yeah everyone. Uh, I'm Andre from uh, Kubeflow Student Community. From I've been there for the last six years, uh, building the distributed training and hyperm tuning tool for the platform. Uh, right now, I'm with an Apple working with these folks for uh, working with Pi White Paper. And other activities. Great to see you. Uh, anybody else uh, that I didn't mention? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Victor Independent, uh, being regular here. Great. Thanks for joining. All right. So we got the intros out of the way. Um, and our first Agenda item is Dean talking about the AI Alliance. Uh, we came up with a few questions for him. Um, so, uh, Dean, did you want to say anything uh, before we start actually going through the questions? Or? Dean, are you there? We might have lost him. Oh, no. He's I'm on mute. Sorry about that. I'm an idiot. Um, this computer stuff completely baffles me. Sorry about that. Uh, no <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the, I actually have the doc open. And the first question is about the elevator pitch for the Alliance, which is a good place to start. Uh, the motivation was really kind of seeing trends where a lot of very well capitalized companies and highly influential people were arguing that this is something fundamentally new, meaning AI that it needs to be locked down, you know, very carefully controlled access, that it's, you know, a threat to life, liberty, and whatnot. Um, and we, uh, the organizations that joined, and it, there was about 50 universities, uh, institutions that are not, you know, like nonprofits, um, and then uh, organizations like IBM Meta, uh, Llama Index, AnyScale, people like that. Actually, Linux Foundation is, is actually a member of that, getting to another question. Um, the thinking was, you know, actually, yes, there are some unique things here. There's some probably new regulations required because of the risk areas of AI. But at the same time, open source has been a tremendously successful way of making things as broadly available as possible, empowering people to leverage technology, and also fleshing out, you know, security issues, vulnerabilities, the whole bit. And we think that that same model should apply here, adapted as needed to you know, address whatever's unique. So that's really kind of the elevator pitch. It's not so much to you know, compete against uh, the established big players commercially, but to really bring people and organizations together that want to you know, leverage each other's skills and strengths and interests, uh, work together to solve problems, to move the state of the art forward you know, in the open as much as possible. And also think hard about the, you know the, the legitimate concerns and risks, and and a piece of the latter would also affect policy, like trying like we have responded to government requests for comment about regulations, uh, and been involved in trying to educate you know people on Capitol Hill about the strengths and weaknesses of AI. So that's really the main 
uh, focus of what we're trying to do. And as I said, it started with 50 organizations around the world. Actually, we're a little underrepresented in the global south, but we're working on that. And uh, I think we're up to 90 organizations now. In, including, uh, uh, for everyone else here, the Linux Foundation. Exactly, yeah. Linux Foundation's a member. They were, uh, some of your leaders, and I'm forgetting their names, were actually at our retreat that we had a few weeks ago with members to you know, work on strategy and stuff. Um, so to another question about getting involved, um, I guess technically this group could either officially join or people could participate through the Alliance uh, or through the uh, Linux Foundation Association. Uh, I'm certainly happy to talk to anybody about maybe more formal membership, like if your company or the, you know, uh, the specific team here wants to join as an official member, we can certainly talk about that too. To be honest, we're also really informal. I'll, I'll give you a very interesting contrast between us and the Linux Foundation. You know, if you think about the history of the Linux Foundation, it was really started to sort of standardize and provide open governance and all the benefits thereof for Linux. This thing that was emerging as a standard, we'll try to really make it a real standard. And then the same thing has happened with, um, you know, Kubernetes and related technologies. We are not trying to pursue that path in the Alliance uh, for several reasons. One, because some people like the Linux Foundation already do it really well. But also things are so early and evolving so fast that it's actually kind of difficult to even define what standards should be. But we can start working on things like defining what are the risk categories that we should all be worried about, what tools seem to be emerging that we can collaborate on together to make them better. So we're very informal in that way in terms of ownership of stuff and how we collaborate. There are no black membership dues or anything like that. Awesome. Anybody has any comments about that or we can... uh, I, I have one. Um, it's more of a statement for, for Dean. Hello, Dean. <laughs> hey, Ron, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, just, I mean, we, we've talked about this, but just so everyone else kind of knows, um, you know, for, for our, our little group um, in Ricardo, maybe you should talk more about this, but, you know, we're, a sub, you know, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation being a subgroup of the Linux Foundation, we're thus a subgroup of the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, right? So what what are we targeting? And um, at least from my perspective, you know, what, what I, I've been saying and others, you know, Cloud Native AI, what is that? Um, you know, very naively, it's Kubernetes and all of its cousins, right? It, you know, related to being used for AI, right? So it's more than that, but that's, you know, the, the quick elevator pitch. So just, I think that's a lot of w where we're working in and out of. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, for our part, um, what the AI Alliance does, if you bump into this neck of the woods, uh, maybe we could be the go-to people uh, to assist you. Yeah. There's certainly a lot of overlap. There's a lot of organizations working on various things, and it can be really confusing too, but which is another reason we're trying not to be too overly organized so that people can feel comfortable, you know, collaborating with us. I'll give you an example. ML Commons, I, I co-lead the, the work group on uh, trust and safety. And if you go to our website, which I think there was a link to it in your notes, it's thealliance.ai, you'll see six focus areas. And uh, the one I co-lead directly is uh, trust and safety. And so we, we're helping ML Commons with their benchmark suites for safety and trying to also help them build that technology in a flexible enough way to be used for other things like evaluating robustness uh, and alignment that's not specific to safety. And when I say we, I mean whoever else is interested. IBM and Meta are actively engaged it turns out there's uh, researchers from Notre Dame that are very interested in, in uh, participating. So that's the sort of thing, again, kind of going where people are and, and facilitating collaboration, and then also sort of trying to see where the puck is headed, so to speak, uh, and where we can help people to um, uh, you know, solve problems. Uh, they, they maybe can't solve themselves. So yeah, this is the one page on uh, trust and safety, and you can see we have a request for information or proposals out if, you know, for people who want to suggest, hey, I've got this great data set that, we, that we're using successfully for looking for this particular bias or something. 
then we can maybe pull that in and make it part of this benchmark suite as a specific example is you know, how the sausage is made, if you will. Maybe one thing just to tag on to that is just so others in the room who may not know, like ML Commons was not, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Dean, was not created by the AI Alliance. It is not the the Linux Foundation, right? Mm -hmm. It's another group, right? Like, so just yeah. so others, like, like you say, like different groups are doing different things, just to make sure people here understand there are separations still and people are doing different things. Right. So yeah, that, that's exactly right. Thanks for that clarification. And it's so it's funny that the Linux Foundation is a member of the Alliance and, you know, uh, IBM is a member of the Linux Foundation. So membership is kind of a loose <laughs> concept, I guess you might say. That's right. I have a question. Do you have any any meetings or gatherings uh, uh, like this meeting or, or you you don't you just meet uh, outside basically meetups or events uh, on how do how do people participate? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I noticed a second question here. Um, actually, the work groups around these focus areas have regular meetings, and that's the place where we like to bring in outside speakers to talk about what they're up to and to learn about us. So the sort of the equivalent of this meeting. We don't really have the kind of equivalent open meeting for the whole alliance because it's kind of a big entity in a way. Uh, instead, we've, we've been so far doing like monthly, um, I think it's monthly, maybe quarterly, all hands meetings for everybody in the alliance. It's, and the other challenge is because it's international, it's obviously hard to get find good times for everybody to meet. But so, for example, if one of you if one of you had a really good idea for a trust and safety thing you'd like to collaborate with us on, then uh, you know I'd have you visit one of our um, uh, my work groups meetings and talk about it. It's a specific example. Makes sense. All right. Any other questions? I think uh, these are pretty much answered. Anybody else has any comments from the audience? Thanks, Dean, for all the all the input. Yeah, definitely reach out to me offline too. If any of you want to follow up, I'm happy to talk at any time. Maybe Ricardo, we should mention that we've been to the AI Alliance meetup just for others in the room, just you know, so they have some history and know what we're doing. Yeah, so what we went to the AI Alliance meetup uh, about a month ago in San Francisco. And we met yeah, the one in Databricks. Yeah. Yeah, in Databricks. And that's how we yeah. started the conversation. But I think uh, there will be more events. Uh, so for folks in maybe in the Bay Area or wherever the AI Alliance uh, has events, then feel free to join those and participate. And, and, and I think like Dean mentioned, if you have an, an idea, uh, you can submit that idea and and see if you can present in one of their meetings. Uh, so at the same time, I think we like to have like Dean is coming over to the, uh, this meeting. We also like to have folks from the AI Alliance come over to this meeting or participate in this working group. So I think the idea is to make it collaborative and uh, bi-directional. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I have a. Uh... I don't know if it's an idea or recommend, but something. Uh, so what, you know, reading through the AI Alliance, and you know, I'm, I'm Red Hat, so also like kind of <laughs> uh, part of this. Uh, yeah. So th there is so the deploy benchmark and tools and other resources that enable responsible development and use of AI. And I, I know, um, I know, Dian, that you mentioned that uh, trust and safety is 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 something that you're 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 working on. So. One of the things that we were thinking about here in this group is like, how can we standardize deployment in a way to enable others to mm -hmm. build cloud native architectures, for example, um, and reference architectures and whatnot. So this is, I, I see maybe as a mm -hmm. as an area where we, whenever we're thinking about deployment, uh, they're probably like, this group is also thinking about deployment and the entire CNCF landscape has been focused around, you know, famous and and and, and widely, use tools like cube uh, to deploy mm -hmm. um, you know large language models or train for training and inference and so on so this I I see potentially as like the other way around when AI Alliance thinks about deployment could we you know build a common shared 
environment for innovators and researchers and folks who want to benchmark things so that there is, you know, there's an, there's a common channel of, of, of collaboration, I'd say. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, so a couple things, there is another, um, Linux Foundation project, I believe it's under the um, data and AI group called uh, OPEA. I think it's OPEA.dev. I'll just type it in this. Uh, yeah, there it is. The, um, the tab is already open. <laughs> pardon me? Yes. Uh, but th this is an example of uh, yeah, an attempt, and some of these folks are members of the Alliance too, where they're trying to you know, go ahead and standardize on some of the things that you, you described, like how do I actually run this stuff? Uh, the other thing that's interesting, just as a little kind of detail about this um, trust and safety group I'm in, is we are trying to build a standardized benchmark suite on top of the basically the ML Commons infrastructure, but make it flexible enough that you could run it on premise, you could deploy it in the cloud for like just runtime monitoring of your models, and probably be somewhat agnostic about what's underneath that benchmark suite. But the obvious thing would be like a Kubernetes deployment, and I'm sure people in our group will define. Uh, you know, the uh, ways to do that so that nobody has to think about it anymore. Makes sense. So I have a lot of questions um, for Dave. Um, so this group has been working, uh, has worked on a white paper and published that. And in that white paper, we identify, you know, the challenges uh, of the, you know, the AI workloads um, posted to the cloud native infrastructure. Um, yeah. So it would be great, you know, if those challenges are, you know, I don't know whether the AI lines are working on that too, because I, I assume you have a lot of um, AI developers and scientists joining, you know, your alliance. So it would be great to get their, you know, feedback because that cloud native web paper is still evolving. We can, you know, update it. So it'd be great if you can, you know, your alliance can go through it and then give us some comments and input about the challenges or about, you know, the potential, you know, solution opportunities or the, the, the project idea opportunities. I think we have some there. Yeah, too. this looks yeah. great. Oh yeah, definitely send me a link. I'd love to look at this. Uh, I, I'm sure Red, I, I think there's some Red Hat folks on the call, but uh, this is a great area for them to really weigh in because they're actually living this in a big way right now, I know internally. So, whereas I'm, I'm kind of removed from the, operational stuff yeah thanks for the link okay um but but i'm very interested in these kind of things i'm working on a safety white paper myself so um yeah this is helpful interesting great or well, we can have some collaboration in the future um yeah either some white paper or, or some projects together yeah. definitely yeah Awesome. Any other comments before we move on to the next item? And Dean, if you have something else going on, I don't want to keep you around, so feel free to drop off. But yeah, maybe okay. I have a quick question to Dean. Sorry, uh, can I ask this quick question? Yeah. So yeah. Dean, I'm actually, I'm actually was involved previously in ML Commons as well and ML Perf together with some other folks. So mm -hmm. uh, I think several years ago. So I'm just like wondering uh, in this uh, alliance, uh, do you help uh, organizations and enterprises? to explain which which technologies we already have in open source and how they can contribute. So how to get them involved and be more active in the community um, on different areas, right? That's a really interesting question because what I've been, like for the safety paper I've been working on is I'm trying to list resources like ML Commons as both tools to use, but also the sources of information like their taxonomy of risk, for example. But I haven't really thought about talking about ways you can get involved, but that would be a good thing to do because we're always looking for people who are interested in participating. Um, and, you know, would very much like to participate, but don't know where to go. So I think that, that's, that's an action I don't know I'll take back. Yeah, thank you. Because I think it will be really beneficial for organizations and communities who want to join an alliance to actually, you know, uh, get in touch with the organizations and people who are interested in these technologies, right? um so we can work together but thank you makes sense yeah thank you thank you dean uh so uh any any last minute questions for him thanks dean
Okay, cool. So um, Adele, uh, we have this item on the agenda. I don't know if we're going to have time to do all of them, but uh, we can go in order here. Uh, uh, if we don't have enough time to go over all the items, uh, let's continue the conversation on Slack and if we can follow up there. So Adele, do you want to talk about this? So it's under a Red Hat paywall or Red Hat. Oh, yeah, that, that, that shouldn't be the case, but uh, I should have opened it up. I'll, let me try it one second. Uh, anyone with the link is the, is the permissions. Let me, yeah. Okay. So I'll just talk about the document. I'll fix the the um, the link yep. uh, later. Um, so the idea here was um, to be able to describe uh, what this group does and also the deliverables that the group uh, has in mind. Uh, and uh, basically, you know, we we divided it into uh, multiple uh, multiple uh, pieces. Um, I think I had the maybe the mind map is something uh, we can uh, we can share. Let uh, me. Uh, so the mind map was something I already shared in the uh, in the channel. Uh, second, so I, I'll just put the link here. Yeah, so it's the link for the so that everyone can also know what I'm talking about. This is the link for the mind map um, in the Slack channel, which should everyone should have access to. So basically, it, you know, we divided it into activities. What activities? So first of all, the mission, uh, why this group exists. Um, it's more tying into the charter, but also the activities. And the activities included things like documentation and guidance. So this group is obviously doing documentations. Um, uh, around onboarding, about you know, around uh, uh, AI, uh, but also writing uh, white papers and uh, knowledge articles for folks to be able to understand uh, what the group does. Uh, so basically, we will need to tell others how this group uh, is involved in the community and where, where, what, what initiatives is the group doing. And then there's community outreach. Uh, where we will basically be talking to users and contributors to understand uh, what problems should we be solving mostly. Um, this could happen through either you know feedback loops, talking to users uh, or contributors from the community, or through meetups and conferences um, like KubeCon. Um, the other opportunity under this is you know pair up ideas and opportunities. Like, can we submit a talk? So there's a lot of ideas that are going to come up from this group. Can we uh, open up opportunities for collaboration? Like someone came up with an idea for a talk. Uh, they have not submitted a talk before, but they'd like a collaborator. They'd like a co-founder for this, for their talk idea. Could they collaborate and, 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 and submit a talk together, uh, which would result in a net benefit for both of them? Uh, content production, the same thing. So this group, you know, one of the activities of this group is you know, blog posts, um, not just uh, knowledge, uh, not just white papers, but we have, uh, you know, uh, I would say knowledge capsules or knowledge articles around like, let's say scheduling, um, in addition to white papers, we've written blog posts before, like, you know, just after KubeCon, uh, describing the learnings and so on. So there will be different uh, artifacts produced in terms of writing. Uh, it could be also videos that being produced um, so, you know, content production is one of the main activities also of how we describe our work. Um, and then project initiatives, hands-on, basically. There will be hands-on initiatives um, like uh, developing, you know, LLM applications as reference architectures. The example recently is, you know, the CNI news summarizers that human can talk about in more details. Uh, the use case uh, guide LLM where basically, you know, someone would go and type hey, my use case is this and this, give me a reference architecture. And so basically eating our own cooking, developing an LM application and showing the community how to do it along the way 
But also there are other hands-on initiatives, um, I would say, like Landscape and CNI. So the idea here of this paper that I will open up, uh, I don't know, I, I saw people reviewing it. I don't know how it, how it was behind that wall. But um, the idea is to describe those activities. Uh, wh what do we do to become successful? What does success look like when we're you know, close uh, or when we have done our work or our job uh, as a community? and uh, uh, some ideas for, for collaboration and the activities that you see in the white, in the, in the, um, in the mind map. Um, so go read the paper. I'll open up the, the just now I'll change the link. And uh, this is the idea is to put this up, um, you know, in addition to what we already put up on the, on the tag runtime working group uh, website. Um, yeah, I, I will fix it. Yeah, okay. uh, sounds sounds good. Uh, any pause, let's pause for a second here. Any comments about this and any any input from anybody on the call? Uh, it sounds good to me. I mean, I just can take a look at the pay, at the document. Yeah, I think this is great. I think I like you know. I know what you describe. Yeah, yeah. It is. after the link is fixed. I think we can take a look at that. Yeah. Fix the link. Sounds good. A lot of work to do. Um, so let's um, move on to the next item on the agenda. We have Meng Xuan and Xiao Zhang, and they want to briefly talk about this uh, project, uh, HAMI. They're trying to prepare for sandbox in the CNCF. Uh, so yeah, take it away. Any comments, anything that you'd like to discuss or, or community members? Uh, if you have any input, feel free to provide it. Okay, thank you. Can I share the screen? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, can, can you see my screen? Yeah, uh, one. I have one request. So, can you keep it short? Because we have other items on the agenda. I just want to make make sure that we allow. Okay, okay, on. okay. I will keep it short. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Limotion from the Four Paradigm, and I'm the founder of Project Hami. Uh, and this and this uh, name of the project is the heterogeneous air computing virtualization middleware, uh, and uh, it mainly solves the problem of uh, device virtualization in Kubernetes. As the figure suggests, if we don't have the device virtualization, uh, each, uh, suppose there are two people, each submit uh, two GPUs, uh, they, they, will, uh, uh, they will assign to a task, uh, they will assign these two tasks to a node and uh, allocate four GPUs. But if we use the device virtualization, it, it only can use four, two GPUs and leave the other two idle to, uh, to run other tasks. And that's what, that is what Hami do. And the architecture of Hami is shown as the figure above. It includes a scheduler extender and a device plugin and a in-container resource control, which is called a Hami core. Hami core is, uh, is functioned by referring the, uh, referring the uh, API from the CUDA runtime and the CUDA driver. Uh, and it, it uh, counts the memory allocated from the CUDA runtime, and it and it can judge whether the container allocates out of their uh, out of the bound. If so, it can return the OM, uh, and uh, if not, it can pass it can relay this uh, function call to the CUDA driver. Yes, uh, and this is the uh, architect of the Hami. Uh, it it includes a uh, Webhook. It is a mutating webhook. It mainly uses webhook to uh, see if this, uh, if a certain task uh, is a GPU task or not. If it is a GPU task, then it assigns the scheduler name of this task to uh, Hami scheduler. So we can uh, use, so we can use this uh, device virtualization techniques to to help to save the uh, GPUs this task used. Uh, and it and this scheduler is mainly used to uh, get the overview of the cluster. Uh, 
uh, and, it, and it can assign the certain task to a uh, appropriate node with appropriate GPU. And, uh, and, it, uh, and the uh, other layer is the device plugin which support uh, many uh, different uh, manufacturer uh, different manufacturer products, including NVIDIA uh, GPU and the Cabric MLU and the Huawei NPU. Uh, yes, and each of them can provide the hard isolation, hard resource isolation inside the container. They also provide a uh, monitoring system here. You can you can uh, export this endpoint to the uh, premises. Yes. And this is the honey key features. It includes device sharing and, and you can uh, specify the device type and device UID. And it, it uh, supports the task priority and it's, it, it can support the uh, CUDA unified memory. Yes, like uh, let's see each of them. The first uh, device sharing, as I just uh, uh, indicated, we have the hard isolation inside the container. In this case, we allocate two GPUs, two, two, two GPUs, each of them use 10 G device memory. So if we type NVIDIA SMI inside this container, we see the, the device memory upper limit is set to the, um, uh, to, to the number you just uh, assigned in this NVIDIA.com slash GPU man. Yes. And the, of course, if we uh, if we use a, a, a PyTorch or a TensorFlow framework in this container, it can cannot exceed the 10G memory device memory limit inside the container. Yes, and the scheduler will keep track of the uh, device memory used by each container. If the uh, GPU node has if this node has two GPUs, each each of them has a 32 GB. Uh, idle device memory. Then, if we allocate this, then if we submit this, this task to this node, uh, the scheduler will know the 10 of each GPU is used, and the remaining GPU is 22 G. It can uh, it can assign other task if they uh, to to the GPU if they uh, if the task uh, use GPU memory less than 22 G. Yes. And we also suppose also support device specification. Uh, as this figure shows, if the if this container don't want to use the A one hundred type of the GPU, it only it only it only needs to add the annotation and with the other column no use GPU type uh, because A one hundred then it won't uh, they it won't assign this job to the to, to the A100 uh, GPU card. Yes, and on the contrary, if we want to use the, if we want to assign this task to the A100 GPU, then what we need to do is to assign these uh, annotations com slash use GPU type to A100, yes. Uh, and the other uh, feature of the project Honey is called the task priority. We can set the priority of each GPU task um, by by assigning the, the by assign by assigning the environment variables named the CUDA task priority, uh, which zero means the high priority and one means the low priority. Uh, the difference between the two uh, two priorities is the uh, if the is the task. Of the in the low priority will mm, will will buff buff the kernel they submitted to GPU when the when there are high priority pod submitting the kernel. You can you see in this figure the low priority pod uses zero percent of GPU command uh, compute cores when the high priority high priority call uses GPU and uh, only when the high priority High priority pod uh, earns their use with CPU, then the low priority pod will continue to use the, the GPU. Yes. I'm going to interrupt you for a bit here. So we have time check. We have 20 minutes. So, um, one question that I have is 
does this actually work with the uh, DRA uh, already? Uh, it uh, hasn't. We haven't uh, made it compatible with the DRA yet. Okay. Uh, but we but plan to do it in the future. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, I, I think we can actually schedule a presentation for this project in one of the tag runtime meetings. So I'll I'll actually follow up with you so we can actually dive deeper into the details. I, I think we just have limited time here. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, so we have a question. Interesting. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, Kathy and Mario, I think you have a hand up. So let's, let's go through those um, questions that you have. Yeah, Kathy, go ahead. Okay, yeah. So I, I think that you, you, your, your, this project, you, you have done some work on the scheduling side, right? And resource allocation side. Um, so what work have, are you, have you done on the virtualization part? For example, if the hardware that does not support hardware partition, or it just support limited hardware partition, for example, when GPU can maybe partition into two, but actually you need more, more granular, you know, GPU. Or if it doesn't support any hardware partition, are you does the project um provide the virtual virtualization of the GPU or the hardware? Uh, uh are you asking how we can uh virtualize the GPU? Yeah, I'm asking for just for example, if the GPU just gave an extreme example, the GPU does not support any virtualize any partition. Okay. One GPU, you can only allocate just one GPU. You cannot yes. say allocate like one fourth of the GPU. Suppose at the hardware level, it doesn't support it. So, at, has, does this has this party done anything at the software level, like to virtualize it? Similar to like CPU, right? One CPU, you can virtualize it into many virtual CPUs. Uh, yes, mm, this is uh, we. The, what the scheduler has done is the, uh, you, you can see in this figure, uh, the Hami main GPU device plugin is a, is a self-implemented uh, device plugin. It's not, it's not the uh, device plugin product provided by NVIDIA. But we modify this plugin so we can uh, register, so we can pass the uh, device memory of each GPU to the, uh, Patch this information to the node annotations, and the Hami scheduler will read these annotations to know uh, how many GPUs on that node and uh, how many device memories is available on each of the GPU. Yes, and if if a task is assigned by the Hami scheduler, uh, they will um, patch the information of how much GPU, how much of device memory this has just used into the uh, pod annotation. And this, the Hami scheduler therefore can read from, uh, can iterate over the, all the available, uh, all the running pods and uh, accumulate the device memory uh, just patched in each pod's annotation. Uh, and uh, it can get the overview of the uh, entire cluster uh, of the uh, GPU. So it can make the proper scheduling. Yes. Okay, maybe let me ask the question another way. So if you share the you, you have multiple parts share the same uh, memory or, G, or GPU. Yes. You will have uh, like do you provide isolation like the, the software level isolation between the memory or between the GPU. I mean that are used by different parts. Uh, yes, we provide the uh, software isolation. Uh, but it but it's not a soft isolation. It's a hard isolation actually, uh, because we uh, use the we, we use the Hami core here, and the Hami core is uh, is a so library uh, which can which can hijack itself between the CUDA runtime and the CUDA driver. It will track the uh, device member of the uh, certain task, and it, and it can see if the device memory used. Uh, Exceed, exceeds the uh, device memory it allocates. If so, it will return the OM error. So the container won't use above the device memory it just allocates. Yeah, I think there's a lot we need to dig into. Okay, thank you very much. 
Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Uh, just a short question. Um, have you talked to, there's a new working group forming in Kubernetes itself, which is called Working Group Accelerator Management. It was formed after KubeCon. It's basically uh, filled in by people from SIG architecture, node scheduling, auto scaling, and network. And they are looking in similar points. So they are looking into uh, sharing resources across uh, deployments for several workloads uh, natively in Kubernetes. Um, are you aware of this working group uh, and are you in contact with them? Uh, I haven't been contacted with them, yes, but I think we have some diversities uh, with, with their work. Yes, uh, I don't think they will provide the hardware isolation inside the container just as the Honeycomb does. Uh, like this group, if we assign uh, 10 GB, you will actually see 10 GB inside the container. I don't think they will dig into this level. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, so let's let's schedule, uh, sorry, let's, let's schedule uh, a meeting and maybe tack run time and we can dive deeper into this project. Yeah, thank you very mm -hmm. much for it. Okay, yeah, thank great. you. Yeah, Mary, if you can post, uh, you know, uh, that, the, the like working group, um, then yeah, Meng Xuan can probably reach out to them. That would be great. Yes. And the comparison, I think I like Adol's suggestion. The comparison of the different, you know, work that would be very, that would be great. All right. So next up, we have this project, but I, I'll just briefly mention it on the on. The sharing uh, of the of the page here. So so um, it's a fees project. It's um it's an open source feature store uh, for machine learning workloads. So take a look at this. I think we have somebody from the project here. Um, yeah, you I have can have more questions. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I can have give one minute, maybe thirty second introduction. So this uh, yeah. is like a, a feature store, uh, open source project. Um. Is by several like companies and also is a part of the uh, Linux Foundation project, incubating project. So we recently like integrating it with some like vector DB and into this LLM uh, hyperwave, uh, supporting like embeddings and storage. So kind of want to get more people get involved and see we can um like maybe like make it more like a uh, AI like useful tools or platform specific yeah yeah thank you i think this is really useful for the ml ml ops uh, life cycle and the part that we have uh, feature stores and we manipulate the data and then basically have a way to uh, store uh, manipulated data data in the feature stores so, I, so I, I just can, can i ask a question or do you uh go ahead yeah, yeah i just uh, is this specific to time series and uh, uh, data, or is this you know generic enough to to work with any other type of data? So in the initial development, it was meant for the time series data, but it's now kind of more general now. We can store the embedding vector data as well, so it's more like general now. Makes sense. So it, we can also chat offline and schedule a meeting and tag runtime. And we'd love to hear about this project in detail and you know how it works and how it integrates with other systems and maybe how we can run it in cloud native too. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. How uh so next up is this challenges kicks scheduling AI document that VJ has been working on. Uh, VJ, you want to talk about this or anything that you want to bring up? Sure, thanks. Um, so so first of all, thanks everyone for the discussion on the title and also the community feedback. It has been awesome. It has been so awesome that I was forced to rewrite the entire document so that it's in sync. Okay, but uh, yes, but uh, it has been a pleasure. Uh, there is some feedback that is remaining. Uh, I intend to uh, sort of uh, do that also. But I think this document is at a stage where um, 
it can be shared perhaps if if you know if you'll feel appropriate with the other working groups or with uh, SIGs or which or whichever appropriate forums. I'm not sure how to do it. Uh, you know, to collect uh, their feedback also to make it. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, and 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 of course uh, we can enhance it, add more scenarios. Still open to it. Um, Yes, and if anyone has any suggestions for illustrations also, uh, feel free to let us know. So basically right now, the title on which we are going, because it seems to explain everything, is uh, challenges and scheduling AI workloads in, in native Kubernetes. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's, that's it for, for now. And keep the, please keep the community feedback uh, coming. It's, it's awesome. Great. Anybody has any comments or any suggestions or anything? I, that I have a question. Yeah. Um, so, so I don't think I ever saw a response to VJ. So it sounds like you're done with your big re redo. And uh, so now it's worth taking a, taking a deep dive on it. Yes, yes. I, I took some time also because I was busy with something personal. But then, uh, yeah, I, I did exactly what you said, you know, just just rewrote most of it, actually. Um, and 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 I, I cannot say enough. The feedback has been awesome. So, yes, done with it. I did post, uh, you know, a couple of days back. So it's quite a recent post in the Slack channel. So it's possible, uh, you know, not everyone has seen it. Um, but uh, yes, it's 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 done. There is feedback still remaining to be incorporated, and and that will be incorporated. But I think it's ready. Uh, you know, Ron, like how you said, to include uh, you know additional feedback. Okay, that's good. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, so folks on the call, if you have any feedback, feel free to comment here or provide it or uh, talk to VJ. Uh, I, Kathy, you have any? I see some comments from you. Do you have any? Yeah, Kathy, yeah. 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 Next in the agenda, we have eight minutes. So uh, we have Mario. Uh, he yeah. has some I would, creative LLM uh, item. I will so, keep it yeah. short. Yeah, um, I talked to uh, Adele uh, a little bit uh, over the last weeks. Um, so uh, a couple of weeks before KubeCon started, we were approached by, oh, my company was approached by University of Erlangen, Technical University of Berlin, and uh, specialized University of Berlin as well. Um, so they have a student project for the uh, summer semester, uh, which ends in August. So um, there's a team of students uh, consisting of 10, 10 students. And um, we are basically their company sponsor. Um, so they are now working on creating uh, or fine tuning a large language model with uh, documentations of uh, CNCF project. So the goal is basically that we create a data set um, from the documentations and from uh, white papers uh, out of the CNCF landscape and share the um, and uh, share this data set publicly. Um, so this will be open sourced because all of the project needs to be open sourced in the end. And uh, they will also um, open source the way how they fine tuned uh, the model. Uh, and the model itself then also will be uh, open source. So uh, the expected date will be August. Um, I would love to get some help to challenge the model in, uh, in, in, in the development time so that we can look for hallucinations um, and uh, see if the quality is, is good and basically also give feedback to uh, this group of students, um, if if this group is interested in providing those, um, I think it's also a good way to get basically get a, a base model that we can potentially move forward or at least get uh, more more data uh, more data sets more data sets that we can use eventually to have like a big model. Um, 
yeah, um, I just wanted to present it to you if this is interesting. Unfortunately, we cannot have them work or, or, or join on an outside activity because they need to do most of the stuff themselves. We can just advise them because it's university project. Uh, Ronald, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, that's that sounds great. Um, just uh, specifically, um, going to do a presentation on on cloud native AI in uh, mid June in Paris. So, part of the point of that talk is to show people what's going on, right? And so, one area that, quite frankly, uh, hasn't been really highlighted is what students are learning and doing. And uh, it would be great to to maybe capture some of that and, and of course help uh i'd love to if, if the opportunity was there yeah sure um I, I have regular meetings with them um and i already said that i will reach out to this working group as well uh and i'm pretty sure that we also that you can hop on a call and uh, ask them some questions and then we can continue from there just awesome. ping me in slack okay great uh you. Hume, Oh, would that be a consideration for the Google Summer of Code? It seems like uh, this is already a student, a student organization, and potentially the DNCF or the, or the working group can be a sponsor for this uh, Google Summer of Code. Uh, the, the, I think um, because they actually get grades on this, um, they can't do it. Uh, so they can't join uh, the Summer of Code. I'm already talking with the CNCF, uh, so with GFI. Um, if you know him, so Jeffrey Sicker, he was head of projects um, for some involvement of the CNCF. Um, what we try to get is maybe some uh, compute resources um, that they can at least use. And uh, also if we can potentially, I also talked to some Google folks because currently they are looking at um, using Gemma as a base model for the, for the fine tuning. I think this is great. I mean, they would love to hear more about it. And I think the community will benefit from having something like this and a way to showcase cloud native. Right? And this is kind of like what we've been talking about for the last few months. Yeah, I yeah think... I'm happy. Hey, go ahead. Go. Uh, I'm also happy to give updates uh, every other meeting or so, like a quick, where are we? Uh, what is the next step? And where potentially help is needed. I will go, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like uh, uh, Mario, I think it, this is great as, as we talked. So the other thing is the deployment aspect of it. I think is is gonna be interesting. I know that they will probably want to focus on the model and the fine tuning. Um, if we can uh, help, you know, also show them how they want it, they can do this on cloud native projects. That would also be great because at the end of the day. Uh, this, if this goes back to the cloud native and the community, I think it would be plus plus go uh, deploy. But I know I'm asking too much uh, for a uh, for a graded project, so I, that would be a good sanity check when they're looking for advice or looking for uh, guidance to also tell them what what's out there, uh, how they can deploy their stuff, so that you know eventually it could scale as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is uh, still an open topic, uh, to be honest. Um, so um, I think that their help is appreciated. And um, we, as you said, we are focusing on training the model and getting the data. So basically, that that's the way how we can chime in, right? So where where nobody can hit us on the hand and say like, no, 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 you <laughs> did something that you're not supposed to do. Training training is interesting also like on, you know, the, for, for CNCF. So yeah, I mean, there's there's uh, how to train on Kubernetes, for example, is, a, is an example, yeah. Yeah. Uh, human, do you have another question? Um, would that be possible you, the students can contribute the code to the, uh, the tech GitHub repo? Um, they have, um, I, I, um, I can share the repository where they uh, will uh, share their code uh, because they will contribute it first to the university and then we can afterwards potentially move it out of the uh, university repository because 
for the first time, especially for grading and um, ownership, uh, it is in their uh, repository, but they will release it under MIT license. So it will be open source. Everything okay. that they do, that's a requirement from the university and uh, the professor is pretty strict with it. So we can, they can also only use tools that uh, have at least Apache license. Oh, so it's MIT license, not Apache license? They have a couple of licenses that they can use. So it depends. Okay. So the tools that they can use uh, need to be open sourced. Yeah, but they're either Apache or MIT, right? So that's uh... yeah, exactly. I I think they will publish under MIT, but they also can use Apache uh, licensed tools. Makes sense. So I, the the other thing that I wanted to mention is that this also kind of ties to this. Uh, this architecture doesn't have Kubernetes here, but then one of the goals of this uh, working group is to make it possible to run this with Kubernetes and cloud native uh, projects. Right? So. Uh, it will be really helpful to continue that effort and 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 this will help a lot the what you're talking about Mario all right so I think we're out of time any last minute questions comments before we say see you later <laughs> lots of stuff <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, active community. That's great. All right. Well, thank you all. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.